CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. If you bet on horses... It really doesn't matter what you bet. Two dollars, five, fifty, or all the way up to the thousand dollar wagers of big time gamblers. Sooner or later, you have to lose. And if you keep on bucking chances, you end up betting your life. And now, running a good race his first time out is Charlie's Dreamboat. But my own whirlwind is pouring it on, opening more and more daylight. Hold it. Hold it. My own whirlwind is pulling up lame. I repeat, my own whirlwind is pulling up lame. Hey, don't you want to know what happened to the pony, Doug? Uh, right at the moment, I'm more interested in what happened to me. Seven races, the favorite runs out of the money. You know what I am, Stretch? I'm dead. <laughs> Our mystery drama, You Bet Your Life was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Ian Martin and stars Paul Hecht and Morgan Fairchild. It is sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and General Electric Citizen Band Radios. I'll be back shortly with Act One. There's an old racetrack joke. The reformer says... All I know is horses don't bet on people. And the better replies, they would if they knew how much fun it is. Not so funny. Today, we do bet on people. Basketball players, football players, baseball, tennis. It's big business. Computerized. The old-fashioned lure is still the horse race. And to the man who wants to do his own arithmetic... It is still the magical big areas of handicapping and hunch. Pony fever is the disease that haunts his blood. Yeah? Uh, Doug Hart, Louie. Uh, I want to get some bets down. No shoot. Uh, first race, no bets. Second, uh, Maribel Pretty across the board, 20 bucks. Third, uh, Dynamite all the way, 30 bucks. Fourth, uh, the Philly, Evergreen Pleasure, 20 on the nose. Uh, fourth and fifth, no bet. Sixth, me and my shadow to win, a uh, big 50. Got it, Doug. Hey, I thought you'd take in the play. <laughs> well, you know how it is, Louis. Uh, circumstances, older cases. Uh, your wife know you're back with a pony. No. Hey, what business is that of yours? Nothing, nothing. Just like me and her, we was like classmates. Uh, you know that? Uh, she never told me. Tell her fat Louie Metzger was your bookie? Uh, no. Now, look, Louie, I don't want her to know. That's all right, Doug. I ain't all that interested in publicity, neither. I got your bets. Now, you sure you want me to lay them? I got her, Louie. I just got her. I, I need to score. That's just when you shouldn't bet. Look, if you won't take my bets, I'll have to go somewhere else. Forget it. Forget it. You want to be a sucker, why should I pass you up? <laughs> You're covered like you asked. I just hope you don't take a bet. I shouldn't gamble. Well, come right down to it, nobody should, I guess. Not me, anyways. I'm a born loser. Then I met Liz, and through her and a friend of her family's, as Mr. Fawcett, I got the job at the bank, and we got married. I don't know how a girl like Liz ever gave a guy like me a tumble. I guess she never would have if she'd known about me and the horses. Doug, that you? Yeah, Liz, honey. Home from the wars. And the races is more like it. Well, what do you mean, huh? Oh, come on, Doug. I know what time the bank closes as well as you do. We had a computer error. We were all stuck in the cage till they could balance the books. The bank, you mean? What else? I was thinking about our books. Oh, look, Liz, I'm, I'm a little tired. Uh, could, could we talk about this later? Doug, I think we ought to talk about it now. Isn't it about time we faced the problem? What problem? You're gambling. Oh, that. You mean a little flyer here and there on the track? I mean a day-to-day -day little flyer. Which daily double did you blow today? Liz, I had this one wired. 
Shamrock waltzed home in the third at seven to one, and Eelgrass was a shoe in in the sixth. I should have cleared nearly three thousand dollars. But you didn't. Uh, could I know the jockey would have a heart attack? No. So, there's your answer. No, not my answer. My answer is you don't make the bed in the first place for just that reason. What reason? You don't know what's going to happen. That's why gambling doesn't make any sense. But that's why it does make sense, honey. Don't you see? If a person knew what was going to happen, there, there, there wouldn't be any point. Why? Uh, why? Because it wouldn't be a gamble then. You don't expect to win. Sure I do. Then why wouldn't you want to know you were going to win before you bet? Ah, uh, come on. What bet would there be? The whole thing is you've got to take the risk. Knowing you could lose. There wouldn't be any risk if that wasn't figured. Or maybe, like someone told me when I found out you were gambling, you want to lose. Who told you that? That doesn't matter. Do you? What? Want to lose. Are you kidding? Why would I want to lose? That's what I keep asking myself. Oh, Doug, what are you trying to do to us? Are you trying to say it's my fault? No, I didn't say it was anyone's fault. Yeah, but that's what you meant. I didn't mean anything. I... I just thought we both ought to see a doctor. Doctor? What for? Well, there must be some reason we can't have a child. Since we both want one so much, mustn't there? We've seen a doctor. Look, I'm just trying to say it's my fault. Because I play a few dollars every week on the horses. A few dollars? Well, okay, maybe more than I ought. We're not starving. I, I win a few, I lose a few. You win a few, you lose a lot. Honey, can't you see what it's doing to us? You're, you're pushing it right to the edge. The edge of what? Doug, I love you. And I want us to share everything. But this way, the, the way it is, it's just no good. I don't want to be the man of the house. Mm, what does that mean? Doug, face it just once. We live on my salary. I got more take-home pay than you. If you took it home. But I am trying to build a future for us. Now, one of these days, I'll hit it big. I just had a run of bad luck. We don't need to hit it big. And we sure don't need the bad luck. Why don't you just quit? You wouldn't ask me to quit a loser. I would. If you mean the racetrack. I laid off the weekend bets and blew the dough on another long shot. I went to see a psychiatrist. She had a real screwy name, Dr. Erica Opscott. But she was all right. I don't think we have to waste the time, Mr. Hart. Uh, you mean you don't want to find out what's the matter with me? I don't know that anything is the matter with you any more than most of us. Uh, you mean I'm not sick? Well, that depends on the definition. That's an answer? Let me clarify. Any compulsion is a sickness, insofar as it cannot be controlled. Some people drink to excess, others smoke. Some have personality disorders that intrude on normal living. But I'm not like that. Look, I just like to lay a little bet now and again. Now and again? Well, like if you don't keep it up, it breaks the rhythm. I mean, like you got to play the odds. Every day? Yeah, well, that's how it goes. And you don't consider that a compulsion? No. I could quit any time I want. So why don't you? Because I don't want to. Is it more important to you than having a child? Of course not. Then why don't you? What? Wait, what has that got to do with having a kid? Well, I don't know. It just might have some bearing at all. But since it's no problem, why don't you quit and find out? So I did. I quit cold right in the middle of a system I was sure was ready to pay off. And if I ever had any idea of going back, that was washed out two months later... When Liz told You've me... You've got to treat me very careful from now on. Well, don't I always? We won't go into that. Lately, yes. I haven't got any cause for complaint. Oh, come on, Liz. I was just off for a while. I know, but now you're back on. I want you to stay that way. I'm going to keep you that way. Can I? Well, you can have me any way you want me. Oh, that's easy. Just like you've been the past two months. Away from the bedding. Well, that's how you want it. Isn't that how you want it? Sure, hon. Aren't you happy? Sure, sure, of course. It's all that important. You mean you miss it? Well, I got to level. There's some kicks around. Like, well, uh, you know, waiting every day, hoping for a big payoff. And that's what you don't have now. 
Well. Suppose you. I was to tell you that since you gave up your first love for me. Hey, 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 wait, wait a minute. No, 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 let me finish. Since you gave up betting on the horses, you have made what I hope is a better parlay. <laughs> oh, well, I don't know the language. You may not be headed for a big winner. But there's one thing you sure are headed for. You're going to be a father. What? Liz, you... you I'm that... pregnant, Doug. <laughs> now, isn't that a better winner than you ever hoped for? Which, of course, it was. And I had the monkey off my back. I forgot the horses. I didn't have to make any bets until... Suddenly, I ran out of the money again in an area I couldn't have handicapped. My boss... Mr. Fawcett called me in. Your uh, meritorious service to the bank is fully recognized, and uh, we have every wish to reward it. Oh, that's all right. I'm just doing what comes natural. Uh, yes, of course. <clears throat> no doubt. Still, with the prevailing economic storm signals, we, uh, we have no other option but to let you go. You mean uh, I'm unemployed? Mm, that is a fair statement of your position. No pension. Unfortunately, you've not been with us long enough to qualify. Well, how about severance pay? Well, unfortunately, you've not been with long us long enough, enough to qualify. Yeah, forget it. So, uh, this is it, huh? Well, as you phrase it, this is, uh, the parking. You mean I'm fired? Well, I... I would prefer to say that you've been... Look, look, let's lay it on the line, Fawcett. Me first, I quit. And I meant it. Honest, I meant it as much as I have ever meant anything in my life. Who needed his lousy job? But then staring me in the face was a life without it. A life that included Liz and baby that was coming in my need for some kind of income. And then I ran into Stretch Collins, an ex-jockey and old friend in the also-ran bar. Hey, so... How'd it been running? <laughs> Not so good. Well, uh, you, you're lucky, kid. Oh, me? Sure. You got a home and a good girl. There at most. Not enough, Stretch. I'm out of a job. I got a score somewhere. Yeah. Well, if there's anyone knows it, I figured you, Stretch. I could bankroll us if you had the key. Ah, <laughs> oh, don't tempt me, Doug. I, I wouldn't want us both to be sorry. Uh, if I can't find a way to make ends meet, that's all I'm going to be. You're that desperate? I'm that desperate. I got no other way to make the bread for me and my wife and my kid. Okay, okay. You know, in my spot, I, I ain't all that so hungry. I, I just like to set and see if it might prove out. Uh, how much capital you got to lay on the line? Well, our joint bank account, a little over a thousand. Hmm, that all? Yeah, that's all. Uh, forget it. Why? Why? <laughs> You play chalk, you you got to have unlimited resources behind you. Chalk? Yeah, yeah, I'd bet the favorites. You know, follow the line. Oh, you can't lose. Now, you don't win big, you just win steady. Enough on a stake of 1000 to make around my salary at the bank? Uh, what, uh, what'd they spring for there? Huh? Yeah, 175 a week. Peanuts. Now, any good week, you triple that. All things being equal. All things being equal. I'm not trying to excuse myself, but if I'd known where I was going, I never would have called Louie to start laying this again. Especially so near to Liz's time. But you see, by then I was so desperate, I had no choice. I was ready to bet my life. Funny. The way it turned out, it was more like Liz's life I was betting. so different from Doug Hart at that. Don't we all have our secret drives, ambitions, compulsions? Is the only difference that we don't succumb to them? We hold them in check? And who is to say we are right? If we let go, what would the consequences be? Well, let's see what they were for Doug when I return shortly with Act Two. keep up a masquerade when someone trusts you almost forever but the key word there is almost if you live a lie 
you live every day with the possibility of the truth coming to light. Even if the lie is only temporary and to protect someone else, it just isn't worth the risk, as Doug Hart is going to find out. Oh, great. Who turned the toaster to the light? Yeah, the bread isn't even warm. Doug, yeah. what's going on here? Oh, I'm just making breakfast, Liz. Uh, Why'd you let me sleep? Well, I didn't want to wake you. Something's burning. Oh, that's my egg. Oh, I'll get him. <laughs> Doug, what are these, scrambles? Well, uh, they started out to be fried, but I uh, goofed, so I had to kind of uh, muddle them around. Uh-huh. What is this that you're cooking them in? Oh, uh, the, the, the bacon grease... Uh, That black stuff? Yeah, well, the bacon got kind of burned while I was getting the coffee. Yeah, kind of. So you muddled the eggs around. You know what you're going to end up with? I know what. A dark brown streaky omelet. (laughs) Why didn't you wake me? Oh, in your condition, I didn't want my wife bending over a hot stove. In my condition, the only way I can bend over is backwards. (laughs) Just the same. Let me take over from here on in, okay? Hey, you're going to have a baby. That's more important than my breakfast. The baby is a couple of weeks away. Your breakfast you have to eat today. Oh, it's not that important. You think I'd send my husband off to work without a good meal in his stomach? Uh, look, hon, it's uh, about work. Oh, I... something else burning. Oh, Mur, that's me again. That's a toast. Yeah, well, that's easy to fix. Yeah, <laughs> if it was all that easy. Oh, what? Oh, oh, no. So stop mumbling, sit down, and let me take care of you. Yeah, I'm the one who should be taking care of you. You've already done that, husband. Uh-huh, you know what I mean. Don't worry, your turn will come. Once your daughter arrives, I'm going to sit back and let you take care what of What do you mean, daughter? You mean son. Just leave this up to me, please. We are going to have a girl. Uh-uh, I'll lay your odds it's a boy. Don't say that. You don't want a boy? That isn't the point. It, it was just what you said. Doug, no more gambling, you promise. Oh, no, look, I, I, I was just kidding. Liz. I know, I know, but you still scare me. Don't give it a thought. My gambling days are over. I I only ride sure things from here on in. You, me, and the kid. I know. I I trust you. It's just that lately you seem so gentle. There's nothing to worry about anymore. No, of course not. Nothing wrong at the bank. <laughs> Better not be. Okay. Then let's get you off to work. I'm uh, sorry if your breakfast is a little singed around the corner. Uh, uh, that doesn't matter, so so long as we are. Hmm? Peace. So sit down. Let me feed you. Uh, I'm the one who should be feeding you. Uh, I don't like to see you on your feet so much. Don't worry. Look, the slightest twinge and I'll call you at the bank. Uh, no, no. Don't, don't call me there. Why not? Well, you know what a creep old Foxy Fawcett is. He, he doesn't like his tellers getting personal calls. Well, surely he couldn't object to a little emergency like your wife having to be rushed to the hospital. Uh, you don't know him. You just said I did. Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean. Now, uh, look, look, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll leave you a number where you can reach me directly. You okay? Okay. It's what I wish I was able to do all the time. Huh? What, what, what do you mean? Reach you. Somehow the last few weeks I... I don't know. I don't seem to be able to. We don't seem to connect. You drift away. I keep losing you. No, no. Not, not me, Liz. Don't ever say that. Hey, we're not losers. We're going to be winners all the way. I should have told her the truth, but how could I? It was almost her time, and I didn't want to worry her. After the baby, then I could tell her. And show her how well I was doing with Stretch's help. All I had to do was be careful. Ride with the percentages. Wasn't big money, but it was steady. I had it all figured out. Sure, I did. The one thing I didn't figure was that Liz would find out for herself. All because of that big mouth, Phyllis Kaufman, who lives next door. Hi, Phyllis. Hi, Liz. I brought back your meat grinder. Okay to come in and sneak a morning cuppa? Sure. I just cleaned up the dishes and I was going to heat up the pot for myself. Let's go in the kitchen. How are you feeling, Liz? Just great. Couldn't be better. Here, why don't you sit down? I'll pour. Okay. You know, you're lucky. When I'm that well, it's as bad as I feel. Death warmed over. Uh, no, no, no cream, no sugar. I, I just take a flat. Mm. Thanks. Tell me, what's your secret? 
Wouldn't you like to know? Now, that's between me and my doctor up to now. Mm. When do you do? End of the month. Look, this is enough about me. How's Hank? Hank? Mm. My husband's like Limburger cheese. You like it, you got to learn to live with it. Oh, it took me a few years, but I make it now without tears. Your hubby home? Are you kidding? At 9.30 in the morning? He's long gone for the bank. Oh? What bank? Maybe savings, like always. Are you sure you don't want some cream or sugar? Uh-uh. Just black. I'm dieting again. Oh, that's funny. Dieting? Nothing funny about that, ever. It's my life story. No, I, I meant about Doug. I thought he'd left Naples. Left it? Yeah. Well, I was in there yesterday. I asked for him. And they told me he'd left over a month ago to start a new business of his own. Oh, well, well, that's crazy. Doug's still with the bank. Oh, I guess somebody made a mistake. Gee, if I, I spoke out of turn. I, I mean, if he got fired no, or anything. No, no, don't worry about that. He didn't get fired. Well, he still brings home the same salary every week and puts it right here in my hot little hand. Oh, look, honey, I didn't mean to make any waves. I have to laugh about Doug. I never get anything straight. I was just feeling real good because I thought for once somebody in this development had gone to bigger and better things. Better things? Well, like if Doug had left the bank, you know, with you expecting and all, wouldn't that be here? I, I never thought for a minute they might have tied the can... Oh, I mean, well, like you say, he, he's still there and everything's hunky-dunky. So... Oh, murder, why don't I just take my big mouth and shove some coffee in it instead of my foot? Well, dear me, Mrs. Hart, isn't it? Uh, that's right, Mr. Fawcett. Uh, this is an unexpected pleasure. We haven't seen very much of you since your husband um, left us. Now, have we? Since my husband... No, no, I'm afraid not. That's such a fortunate thing that uh, events coincided so happily. Events? It's always so, so unpleasant to have to, uh, well, neighbors were sorry to lose him. Fine, young man, fine. Uh, but to look on the bright side, how fortunate it was that he had already planned to leave. Under other circumstances, uh, we'd have been uh, most sorry to see him make the change, most sorry. I was sorry to find out it made the change myself. Of course, one understands the young man's ambition and drive is so important for the family on the way. <laughs> if you'll forgive my mentioning it. Yes, it's a little hard to overlook. <laughs> but I'm sure you didn't come to visit us at the bank just to indulge in idle chatter. What can I do for you, Mrs. Hart? Well, I just wanted to find out. I, uh, I just wanted to check our bank balance. No, I can tell you that without checking because uh, Mr. Hart closed out the account before he left. He threw out all the money? Yes. But it, it, it was a joint account, you know. Yes, I know. But I, I thought you knew about his uh, leaving us and thought about the new business venture. Well, by now, there's no use trying to pretend to you that I do. Do you have any idea what it is? Well, I'm afraid not, I... I tried to find out, but he uh, didn't disclose his plans. Uh, oh, I wish he had consulted me because, well, quite frankly, I felt that a capital venture at this juncture in his life was uh, ill-advised. He didn't give you any idea? No. No, and, and, and I didn't like to press. I wish I could tell you more. Oh, I think you've told me plenty. Thank you, Mr. Fawcett. Always glad to be of service. And, uh... May I express the hope that uh, whatever your husband is doing, uh, that it's the right gamble for a prospective father? I've got the feeling that's just what it is. A gamble. Of course, I didn't know all this at the time, luckily. Because over at my friend Stretch Collins' apartment, listening to the track announcer calling the afternoon races at Belfort, I had enough bad news of my own to handle. Into the stretch. It's the favorite. My own whirlwind on the rail. Oh, pulling whirlwind away from go. the field as his rider I goes to the whip. To win. Oh, he'll show them heels, Doug. No one's going to run up his back now. I better not. It's been a bad day stretch. We've got to pull this one out of the hat. It's last race. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold
hold it. My own whirlwind is pulling up what is lame. That? I repeat, my own whirlwind is pulling up lame. Looks like a tendon. He's out of the race now as Mr. Mephistopheles, Stampede, and Charlie's Dreamboat go thundering by on the outside, neck and... Hey. Hey, don't you want to know what happened to the pony, Doug? Yeah, right at this moment, I'm more interested in what happened to me. Seven races, seven in a row, the favorite runs out of the money on me. Well, you know, you get days like that. Uh, but you ain't going to the cleaners all the way yet, have you? Uh, another day like today, I'll be flat. Tomorrow, they got to run to form. They just got to. Here, I better pay up. Well, I, I hate to take the dough, Doug, but, well, you know how it is. Uh, I already called in the bet to Louie. Yeah, 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 I know how it is. No, I, I don't think you do. And look. But we've been buddies since we went to school, right? Now, why, why don't you let me hand you a real hot tip? <laughs> I could use one. Okay. Here it is. Now, you take your bloody nose and you get out. I can't, Stretch. I need the money for, for my kid. Jeez, get out. I better get on home. Can I use your pad tomorrow, same time? Hmm. Well, if you got to be a hard nose. You know, you dropped quite a bundle today. How do you explain that to the little woman? I don't. She doesn't know what I'm doing. You think you do? I'd better, before I run out of the money, too. Famous last words. She doesn't know what I'm doing. Because by now, of course, Liz did. As I found out as soon as I got home... Doug, please don't lie to me. I'm not lying. I know you've lost your job and you took our money out of the bank. And I, a good guess is you're taking it over to Stretch Collins so he can bet it for you. Stretch isn't a bookie. Well, he has something to do with horses and the track. Honey, Louie is the bookie. Stretch is just a good friend. He's helped... To gamble. No. Then what? Look, it's a system. Have you, have you any complaints? I've been bringing home the same salary oh. I got from the bank every week for the last month. Ever since I left? Why didn't you tell me they'd let you go? Honey, I didn't... I didn't want to upset you. Not now. And I have to do something. Look, trust me, please. It, it's working out. I'm making a living for it. Gambling? It's not gambling. Look, this is a, this is a system, I'm telling you. It's, it's, it's like investing in the market. You do it right, you can't lose. I don't care about that. I just want you to stop. I can't, Liz. You mean you won't? I mean I can't. That's what I'm afraid of, Doug. It's a sickness. Don't you see that? Please stop. I can't. Now, don't you see? I'm only doing it for you and the kid. No one in the world has more excuses, rationalizations, than the addict. Whatever his addiction is, he's the last person to understand that he's hooked. It's all as insubstantial as a spider web. A metaphor that is apt because he is caught. No matter what the addiction, the addict is a born loser. I shall return shortly with Act Three. a strange night for the hearts, a sleepless haunted one for Liz, a drugged sleep of self-defense for Doug. But now the endless night is over, and with morning, Doug drags himself from the neurotic sleep which has not refreshed him to watch a pale and exhausted Liz at last finding some fitful rest of her own. He has dressed quickly and surreptitiously stolen downstairs and is about to leave the house when... Doug? Oh, uh, hi, darling. You were going to sneak out on me. I uh, thought you were still asleep. After last night? Close the door. Darling, please, let's not drag over We've it. We've got to. You were going over to Stretch Collins, weren't you? Like I explained, I have to. Why? I told you. I'm 500 of our thousand in the hole. I gotta make that back and get in the black again. Another day like yesterday, and you could lose it all. It couldn't happen. There couldn't be another day like that. Not playing chalk. Oh, don't give me that racetrack lingo. But I explained what it meant. Look, honey, it, it, it's so simple. I, I'm not trying to make any big kills or get rich quick. I'm just trying to make a living for us. No one makes a living out of betting. I've been doing it for the last month. Just a run of luck. No, sir. No, no. no. Sober, careful calculations. 
honest, Liz, I've actually been making more money every week than I did at the bank. Until yesterday, when you lost $500. That was yesterday. Today I'll get it back. How? It is a sheer matter of mathematics. When a horse is established as a favorite, he has to run into money most of the time. So you bet him to win, place, and show. If he wins, you take all three. If he places, he pays off twice. Even if he only shows, you don't get hurt too much. And in the long run, day in, day out, you got to make money. And what about the short run? What do you mean, the short run? Suppose you went through all your money. You didn't have any more to bet. Liz, I'm not betting long shots. Why don't you trust me? I will. If you'll quit right now. I can't, Liz. I can't. Not until I'm even. Now, don't ask me to let you and my son down. You mean your daughter. <laughs> Okay, okay, that's one bet I'll be happy to lose out on, but i got to make up on the others. No way I can stop you. It's for all of us to get back what I've lost. You know what I hope. What? I hope you do lose. Maybe it's the only way you'll ever get over being sick. Losing won't help any, Liz. But if I do, I won't be back. Okay, Doug. You can gamble, but I'm not going to. Not with all our lives. If you can't stop yourself, I will. Yeah? Is this Stretch Collins? Uh, uh, who wants to know? This is Liz Campbell. Who? You remember me from school. I... I married Doug Hart. Uh, oh. Uh, if you're looking for Doug, he ain't here. I know he isn't, but he will be, Stretch. Uh, look, I, I didn't say that I... I uh, you can't fool me. I know your voice. Especially on the phone. You used to call me often enough. Uh, well, well, that was when I was still riding and I had something to offer a girl. Stretch, you could offer this girl something now. What? Don't take any more bets from Doug. Uh... Look, Liz, I tried to head him off, but if he's got money and he wants to lay it, I can't turn him down. Like, I don't make books. I only run for, uh, well, for the guy who does. See, I start turning down betters, I get my head handed to me in the basket. Then please, ask the bookie to turn him down. Honest, Louie? You've got to be kidding. Well, then tell me how to reach him. I'll ask him. Liz... Liz, I can't. This is a rough guy. Well, anyways, it won't do no good. Doug would find another parlor. You know, once a guy has the fever, eh, and nothing stops him. Not even for old times' sake? Oh, honest, I, I can't help you. And don't kid yourself. You can't help him either. Is Honest Louie by any chance the same fat Louie Metzger we all went to school with? I, I didn't say that. I know, you practically did. And I bet it is. And I think just for once I'll play my hunch. Where can I find you? Uh, now, look, I, I can't tell you a thing like that. You don't have to, Stretch. Just promise me one thing. What? Don't tell Doug I called you. Please. Once again, although I was the guilty party, I didn't know what was going on. I only knew the nightmare I was living through, perhaps deserved, but devastating enough to be like the end of my life. And what was worst of all, I didn't know yet how desperate it was to become. And the awful, incredible thing I was about to do that might mean the end of my life and Liz's. And Butternut Hollow takes the big money with Kelso's Nightmare and Sweet Prince Charlie to place and show. So this fifth race today has followed the amazing pattern of the whole card yesterday. An astonishing reversal of form which has seen the favorite run consistently out of the money in 12 successive heats. Oh, boy, I, I have never seen anything like it, Doug. Just doesn't figure. What am I going to do now? Well, you, you take your lumps. I can't stretch. I'm flat broke. Unless, unless I can get it back on the last race... Look, we both know Highwayman is a lead pipe cinch. I, I, I got to get a bet down on it. If you got the long green. Oh, no, look, he can't lose. What's what's he going off? Huh? Uh, two to one. Yeah, you see, that's perfect. I can get my thousand back, and then I'll quit. C call it in, Stretch. A thousand bucks? You you got the do re me to cover? You know I don't carry that kind of cash. Well, I can also guess you don't have it. 
No, no, I'm sorry, pal. But I had no cash, no bill. I'll give you a check. Uh, no, no, not me, you don't. I, I broke my legs falling off a horse, and I don't want them broken again. Look, you can't lose. If I don't win, I, I, I'm lost anyway. Oh, stretch, call it in for me. Doug, I don't want any part of this. you got to see that. Now, I'm going out to make some collections. You want to call that bet in, you call it in yourself. And if, if you want to know what I think, win or lose, I hope Louie don't cover you. So I was left to make the decision. Make a bet I couldn't cover, but that if I won, would put me on clear street. But if I lost, I might end up in a river somewhere with concrete boots. Sure, we all went to school together, but me and Fat Louie never cut it that good. One thing was sure, and I didn't have that much time to make up my mind. So. Hello. Hmm? Oh, Doug. Sure. Yeah, you got time. How much? Uh, hold it, huh? Louie. Hey, Louie, I got a hot one here. You better handle it. Yeah, what do you got? Doug H. wants to lay a big C on highway, man, to win. Uh, Stretch got the dough in hand? He ain't there. Out making collections. You want to take the bet? Uh, what do we got to post time? Ten minutes. Okay, let me talk to him. Yeah, get that with you, Doug. Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, Hello? Doug. Yes, Doug, this is Louie. Hey, you're good for the big C. Of course. Sure, sure, I know. Yeah, we're all big friends. So I'll buy you a check. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, you got ten minutes to make it here by post time or no bet. Well, that's your problem, cousin. I got enough of my own. Huh? No. Okay, okay. You push me, I'll cover you. You just get it here, and you got honest Louis' word. Who's that? It could be Stretch. Or the cops. Uh, take a gander through the peephole, huh? It's a thing. A thing. When I should let her in? Uh, let, let me see. Why, that's... That... Miss Campbell, what are you doing here? I had a fine time tracking you down, Louie. Those five flights of stairs... Come in, come in, come in, come in. Oh, Liz, you're still the pick of the crop. <laughs> Long time, Liz. Hey, what do you want with me? Louie, I... I don't know how to say it, but... Like you can see, I'm, I'm having a baby. Oh, now, uh, wait a minute. We ain't dated since high school. No, no don't get me wrong. All, all I meant was... I, I'm married, Louie. Oh, hey, that's nice. To Doug Hart. You remember him? Oh, why, sure, sure, Doug. Yeah, yeah, Doug Hart, sure. That's why, for old times' sake, I... I wanted to ask you not to let him... Oh! But, but, not, not, to, not to let him what? Hey, Liz. Liz, Liz, what's the matter? Are you yes. all right? Yes. No, it's... It's the baby. I... What? Uh, I think it's coming. The baby. Uh, Doc. Oh, Doc, do, do something quick, Doc. Wait, what? what? I don't know. Get it in the couch so she can lie down and uh, uh, fix her up. Uh, fix her up? How? How should I know? You used to be a vet. She, she can't, she can't, she can't go having a baby in no bookie chains. <laughs> Doc, Doc, forget the phones. We ain't taking no more bets. How you doing, Doc? Well, she's okay now, I think, but we better get an ambulance. Are you kidding? I have to go out city hospital. That means cops. We can't have the bars up here. Then we'd better take her to the hospital oh. with the phones ringing and all. They're practically at the starting wire now. Oh, no. So she can't hold out until the race. It's just about post time. They are bringing all the Phillies to the... Oh, let him in. Now. Highwayman has refused... Uh, I made it by post time, didn't I? Hey, hey to get the Phillies, Doug. You've got another race on your hands. I got my bet down on time, didn't I? Yeah, yeah, I covered your bet. And what is more important right now is to get your wife to the hospital to have her baby. What? Liz, win. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no, what? What? It, it's Highwayman. I mean, she's just got to win. Why, well, you better know it. I mean, you laid my bet. <laughs> you called it in. Yeah, so I can't afford to lose. Oh, with your wife in that condition, you just ain't a whistling bitch. Yeah, the devil with a horse race. We got to get Liz to the hospital. Oh, we just made it under the wire. Yeah, I hope. 
And what happened to highwaymen? She fouled the gate, threw a jockey, never made the course. Oh, I sure hope nothing like that happens to little Mrs. Hart. Well, it looks like we're about to find out. Here comes her husband. Hey, hey, okay, Doug. What's the rundown? <laughs> Is she all right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's fine. Just that, uh... Well, well, don't uh, hold back on us. I mean, Doc and me, we got a little action here. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what was it? A boy or girl? You both win. Boy and a girl. How about that? Twins. And another boy. Oh, triplets. Oh, you swept the board. <laughs> uh, did I? How about the last race? How'd I do there? Well, you lucked out. I won? No, bub. You lost. Oh, no. Uh, you know, you would have if I laid the bet. Only I didn't. Well, maybe it could be a good lesson, huh? <laughs> well, what do you care? You're young, you can always make money. You won the only race that really counts, huh? And big. Across the board. Win, place, and show. <laughs> Why don't you make it your last bet? You mean I... I don't owe you anything? Nah, not a thin time. So, don't you figure it's time to quit? <laughs> you bet your life. Well, yeah, that's what you do, brother. Every time you lay your two dollars on the line. <laughs> it's a harmless enough pastime, betting a little on the horses, in moderation. The only trouble is that harmless pastimes have a way of sneaking up on us, taking over our lives, controlling us instead of us controlling them. This time, the victim was lucky. He didn't become a victim. I'll be back shortly. This is Howard Cosell admitting that rich as my fund of information is, there is one subject I still haven't mastered, CB Radio. However, many people are equally uninformed, so for everyone I questioned General Electric. Their answers illustrate why GE is expert in CB. Listen to the words of Jim Whidden, GE electronic technician. Jim, why should I buy GE CB? Because uh, we build them better than we have to. And idle boast till you prove it. Easily, our units are designed not only to meet, but to exceed FCC guidelines. An excellent start. They're designed for better isolation of adjacent channels, which means less channel spillover, and to minimize interference with nearby TVs and stereos. I'm sold. Building them better than they have to. Another reason to buy GECB. Now this is how it goes, Sal, saying GE. That's more than you can say about any other CB. The hardest part of growing a garden comes before you plant the seeds. Hi, Pat Summerall to tell you how True Value Hardware Stores can make that hardest part, preparing garden soil, a lot easier. Right now, True Value Hardware Stores offer a lawn sheath, two-horsepower, chain-drive portatiller for the exceptionally low price of just $139.99. This rugged, easy-to-handle tiller weighs just 65 pounds, yet it does all the back-breaking digging for you while you just guide it along. The Lawn Sheaf Portatiller has eight times that really dig in to turn over even hardened ground in minutes. You can easily adjust both tilling width and depth. And when you're finished, the handle folds flat for easy storing and transporting. The Lawn Sheaf 2-horsepower Portatiller, priced at just $139.99, is just part of the selection of Lawn Sheaf Power Tillers you'll find exclusively at participating True Value hardware stores. True Value. Remember, that's more than just a name. It's their way of doing business. Tell them Pat Summerall sent you. Heaven knows I don't mean to preach. And all of us should be allowed to follow what paths we want to. But when I open that creaking door, all of us must be aware that as I welcome you in, I must also leave it open to all the terror and misfortune that man is heir to. I hope you can avoid all that, as Doug did tonight. I welcome you as guests to enjoy your stay with me. I sincerely hope whatever of the Black Knight sneaks in with your coming is only vicarious for both of us.
cast included Paul Heck, Morgan Fairchild, Earl Hammond, and Ray Owens. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by True Value Hardware Stores. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.